Rob, how are you? I I am well. I am very well. You look it was well. such a pleasure to get to see you the other day and yeah. and get a chance to get some time to chat. Outstanding. I'm glad we could follow up with this conversation because we were talking a little bit about uh, something called RAG. Yep. And uh, well, you know, let's, before I start talking about that, just tell us a little about Rob Bo. What do you do? Uh, well, <laughs> first living, the Earth I mean. cooled and then the dinosaurs came. <laughs> uh, now, so I've been doing I've been doing tech for a really long time. So 20 years as a Microsoft MVP. Originally, Windows Server networking, commerce server. After that, before commerce landing, server. I did some commerce server site server <laughs> yeah. commerce edition. That was called when I did it. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, times are better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have as much gray hair in those days. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so then, then SharePoint and Office 365 and Microsoft 365, uh, we do technology work, as you might expect. We also do organizational change work. We've got a lot of experience in healthcare. Um, and I just don't know how to stay in my lane. I just keep doing stuff and hopefully figuring it out. Good enough uh, all these shiny like toys to play with all these things shiny to toys love cool. shiny toys <laughs> <laughs> all right so one of these things that's um uh, hot right now is generative ai uh, it's um it's been around for a while but it's getting a lot more attention recently and one piece of that that makes it really interesting was this term rag and you brought this up and i think a lot of people don't know what rag is can you just start with a definition yeah so it's retrieval augmented generation uh and i think what we've got to do is put this a little bit in context. So generative AI, right? So these large language models, uh, they crawl a whole bunch of content and then they give you answers. Fine, sure. What they what they miss from an organizational perspective is what the unique value of the information inside the organization, right? You'll get the same sort of answer that anyone else can get. But your organization knows something unique and different and special about the things that you know. And so what RAG does is it brings your organizational knowledge and content in uh, context, in, in contact with these large language models, it puts them together so that the answers you get are more useful to you. They're more in tune with the language that your organization uses, and it shapes the output of the generative AI tool. Oh, cool. So I think uh, to, to provide uh, con contrast to that, if I go to chat GPT or I go to Bing Copilot, I can use natural language to ask a question, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, Rob Bogue. And it will only tell me what it knows from basically from the Internet, public Internet. Yes. That's what it will tell me. But yep. if I go to uh, your internal company website, there may be articles in there that are uh, specific to you. And I, can, and I can ask not just about Rob, but I can ask about, you know, tell me about my company's HR policy. Tell me about yeah. our vacation policy. Tell me you know, yeah. how many things, specific things that aren't on the public Internet. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and so let me let me separate here because because co even being co-pilot does something cool that uh the chat gpt doesn't do so chat gpt you ask it a question and it will give you an answer based on the last crawl the last time that it got updates right what's cool about copilot in general including both bing and m365 copilot is that it will go out and get current information so if you issue a query about me on uh, bing you will get back answers that could potentially be a week old not okay. months and months and months and that same sort of thing works internally, as you've implied uh, or said that, you know, if I authored something last week and it said, hey, what's the latest thing that Rob authored? Well, there's two things that are going to happen because of the super cool tech that we've got in M365. First, it's going to infer who you mean. Um, so it's going to go, hey, you're connected to uh, all kinds of people. This is the Rob that you're most likely to be talking about, or it oh. may even prompt you. Right, depending sure. a little bit on your settings and so forth. And and so that's because it knows how we interact. Mm -hmm. The second thing it's going to do is it does that search and it can see things that I've authored recently and it can respond to you in that way. And what we're doing there is getting both your social network and then that retrieval augmented generation, uh, which is which is trying to help you figure out, which is trying to help the engine figure out how can I respond to David in the way that best meets his needs. Okay. And you mentioned a couple of, you mentioned uh, Bing Copilot and you mentioned M365 and there is an M365 Copilot, which, yep. which helps you do this, right? Talk a little yep. bit about that. 
Yeah, and so that separation, and and you you said this uh, briefly, but but Bing uh, Bing Copilot is public, right? So it's searching the public internet stuff that's available to everybody. M three sixty five Copilot uh, is focused. I, I have to be a little bit weird because they they keep changing tunings, but it's okay. focused on your internal search. Okay, and so the things that occur internally that no one on the outside world has. It respects all of the same permissions and restrictions and all the stuff that you would you would expect, um, in part because it's built on top of search. So what when we talk about bringing your internal content, we're augmenting with content. What's happening is is you are issuing a search to Microsoft Search. It's retrieving results, feeding that into the engine. So if I'm going to break it apart. It listens to your query, figures out, hey, what should I issue? What kind of a query should I issue to search? Issues the query to search, gets the results, and then it generates a response for you that um, is contextually relevant and, and hopefully had the right kinds of results for you. Okay. So, and it's respecting things like uh, if I were to ask for what's the salary of this vice president? Um, well, I couldn't, that's not, if I don't have permission to view that salary, then it still, it won't return it to me. Correct. Something right. Like and that. that's the same way that search is built. Right. Um, right? So it, it basically uses search as that internal component um, and search is handing off those contents. So if you didn't have access to it, it doesn't get returned in search and you don't get to see it in uh, as a part of the augmentation that's happening. All right. Talk a little about the implementation. How, how does one implement RAG using M365 Copilot? Or I think it's Copilot for M365 is the initial name. Yeah, whatever. M365 <laughs> and Copilot together in some orientation with an article between it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the cool thing is, is it's already implemented, right? Like that's actually the, the piece that's amazing is it's just going to do this. This is the way that it functions. And it's what differentiates it from, um, you know, even Bing Copilot, but also the large language model by itself. Um, you know, I fairly frequently at this point get asked, what's the difference between Copilot and uh, ChatGPT? And my answer is, well, Copilot is a, is a wrapper. It's a bigger box that sits around it. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's ChatGPT is the smaller box in the inside as a large language model today. But you know what? They might swap that out at some point, or they might add two or three of them and get different answers for you or whatever. So um, and so it's the, a layer uh, large of, language model, you mean? Yes, LLM, large language model. Sorry. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that might get swapped out and that's fine. That's great, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't have to worry about it as a user. I don't have to worry about what's the right thing for me. That's a decision that Copilot can make. Um, but so M365 Copilot or Copilot for Microsoft 365, whatever we want to call the thing. Um, it, is, uh, it is that internal, that internal visibility to the knowledge that's unique to your organization. All right. So really all I have to do is just, um, if my organization has uh, subscribed to Copilot for M365, I'll get a button in all of my office applications and in yep. my, uh, maybe in my Dynamics applications. And uh, that will allow me to do this kind of uh, natural language search that you just described. Uh, yeah, and I without, think... Without doing anything. It's just there, right? Right, it's just there. I think the best experience of it today, right, as we talk this moment, the best experience is to go to the Microsoft365.com and it's on your portal and the very uh, gen tends to be the very last entry on the list on the left. You click that and now you're in this chat experience where you can mm -hmm. interact with it. Certainly you can interact with it from uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint at all. Um, but, but I find for this where I'm trying to get an answer that is based on the knowledge that the organization has, um, that m365.com experience is the best experience that we have today. Okay. Uh, is there a thing, is there more I could do with it beyond just what comes out of the box? Yeah, I think, so I think what, what happens is people experience it and I, like, Ooh, 99, 98, 90, some percentage of the time, it's a really good thing. And it's a really good set of answers. And occasionally you're like, Ooh, I don't know why it thought I was asking that question, or I don't know why it included this kind of a thing. And what you can do then is go in and start to work on how do I tune search so that search is returning to Copilot the right information for Copilot to make the best decisions. And so sometimes in large organizations, search has been under uh, appreciated. 
uh, because it was too difficult and people didn't use it that often. Uh, now with RAG, it, you need to pay more attention to it. You need to pay more attention to how do I get search to return the right answer every single time um, or more often. Um, and so that's, uh, how, that's how, how we do, do, I do that. Well, there's two, there's all kinds of tuning it, you know, there's all kinds of backend administrative settings for tuning and you can set, you know, which things are authoritative and which things are not. And there's all, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a wealth of detailed settings for that. Um, but I think understanding from a conceptual level, how do you get the best results? Well, that's through RAG. How do you get RAG to be more effective? Well, you, that's through search, right? And then it becomes, uh, how do I invest in, uh, communicating to the search infrastructure what is important to me how do i help it understand the way that we've structured things um you know at a, at a super high level people talk about we've got to uh we, we've got to do all this information architecture and i teach information architecture have for decades like I, I it's a great thing and we absolutely have to do it um but i think the the thing to think about is is how do we communicate and express that in the microsoft 365 ecosystem and that then becomes to that that starts to uh, inform search, inform search, drives to rag and so forth. Um, there are times when we can't get an information architecture in place, and because of that, we have to go kind of directly tune search and say, nope, this is super important. This isn't important. Here's the way to to you know to elevate these sorts of things. Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of that uh, customization is done through not through the Copilot interface, but through Azure Search, tweaking Azure Search, because that's a yeah, uh, yeah, Mac, a Microsoft, Microsoft Search, yes, yeah. Microsoft Search, okay. Um, yeah, and I so yeah. one other thing that we I, I kind of sidestepped in um, because I think getting the basic understanding is is the the first part, but the next part is understanding that because of the framework that's in place for search, we don't have to limit what we can use to augment Copilot to just things that are in Microsoft three sixty five. So, for instance there is a connector for ServiceNow. And so that connector for ServiceNow allows you to put that into the search index that then can be fed into Copilot. And now you can start to have your line of business applications as a part of this broader uh, information set that Copilot can use to get you an answer, right? And one could see a point, and I think, and I think there's still some uh, minor technical gaps that are getting closed. One could see a point where you could say, hey, for Acme products, what is the latest product they released? Or what was the last thing we sold them? Or those sorts of questions start to become more and more possible as you start to get more and more content into the search index, therefore in RAG and therefore in Copilot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you talk a little about the part that responsible AI comes plays in this and how we can address that when we're using Copilot? Yeah, I think so. So responsible AI is a big, huge sure. thing, right? And um, I think that there are two things that Microsoft's done that are brilliant. And I don't, I don't like, yes, I've been an MVP for 20 years, but I don't say everything that Microsoft does is brilliant. I don't Neither say do I. that. Um, but, but one is um, the responsible AI integration into Copilot. So um, I, um, I will say that uh, one of the pink, one of the things that we uh, are doing some work on is suicide prevention research. Okay. And I can tell you if I enter suicide without prevention or I enter it in a context that it doesn't interpret as prevention, um, my conversation will get shut down and it's appropriate, right? Like it's doing the right thing. But what it's doing is it's shutting off those conversations that it shouldn't. Um, but that's just sort of the, that's, that's table stakes, right? Like that's the entry level. I think the commitment that the organization made that it will not use a company's information to train the large language models, that your information is your information, whether it's the stuff in your tenant or it's the stuff that you're using to query, that's yours and we're not gonna do anything with it. That um, is a huge, huge thing. Um, the last thing I'll say towards responsible AI is it's, it's a moving target, right? We know that no matter how much work we do or the owners of the large language models do to train the model in a um, unbiased way, bias still creeps in. It's going to. Okay. And what what's cool is how we continue to affect change in that and how do we get better 
and how do we get better at that? I know, you know, that there's concern about how AI is being used. Um, I know, I know, you know, what conversations that come up are, I'm going to lose my job. Probably not, probably going to not happen that way, but it could, um, you know, when Skynet happening, for those of you who have not watched <laughs> Terminator, uh, yeah. Skynet ha- more likely it's going to change my job. That's what disruptive. Yeah, 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 yeah. More likely, more likely it's going to change your job. You're going to spend less time in, in, in the, the utopian point of view, you will do none of the stuff you don't like to do and all the stuff you do. Yeah. Right. I, I don't think that we're quite going to hit utopia. <laughs> not yet. But, not for a bit. <laughs> but but by the same token, there are a lot of people that spend a lot of time manipulating cells in Excel and you can say, Hey, go do this. And it does it right. Or, um, you know, I personally have not had a great love affair with the design wizard inside of PowerPoint. Um, I don't love it. Right. Um, it's been getting better and it's, you know, I probably need to give it a second chance, but, but also, there's a lot of people that don't spend a lot of time in PowerPoint and it's easy to go, Hey, make this look pretty. Right. Yeah. And, and it makes it look prettier. So <laughs> that's good. That's a nice use of AI or make this look uh, more professional and target at an audience of game geeks. <laughs> right. Like right. Exactly. And, and it doesn't get it right the first time. And because it's chat GPT under, it's a large language model underneath it. You can say, Oh no, but I don't like the color red. So use blue instead. Right. And it shifts everything, you know, or, <clears throat> or, you know, I work at Coke, so it has to be red or I work at Pepsi. So it has to be blue. Right. Like y- you can, you can do those, um, those sorts of, of conversations, to eliminate the work that you don't like to do, you don't know how to do, and you don't want to learn how to do. Or even if you do know how to do it, it also frees up your time so that you can use that right. time to solve business problems, which is really what we're in the business of doing. Technology is right. a point tool for doing that. It's nice to uh, focus on the things that really add value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, there's really old stats IDC um, said, you know, 80% of people's time is spent looking for stuff. I actually think if they did that today, it would be, they sit in meetings. But if you, if you just take a step back and look at what, what part of your day are you actually doing the stuff that brings you joy? And I'm not going Marie Kondo on you. I'm not going to be like, you know, all that, but, but, but also like, what's the fun stuff, you know? And, and, you know, I know you and I've talked about that you know, that's really talking to other people and it's in, in helping people solve problems and sharing. And, you know, it's lots of really cool stuff. How do you do more of that and less of clicking keys? Right. Uh, this is some really good stuff. What, uh, if people are new to this topic, where is a good place to get started learning? So the thing that I would, so the thing that I would do is I wrote this paper with aim. Uh, it's currently on draft. It'll be released permanently. Uh, and it is organizational readiness for generative artificial intelligence. In it, we talk about the change management aspects or employee engagement. How do you get people okay with it so that they're not afraid of Terminator? Uh, we talk about content access, which is how do you get your content to the large language model so that it can do the rag? And then we also talk about the hygiene factors, which are the art, the uh, information architecture and uh, how does that all work together so that you can get that those best results out? Um, Great. And that's a really that good place now. to be. Yeah, it's at AIIM.org, and I'll put a link to the document itself in the show notes. It looks like it's about a 30-page PDF. Yeah, it's pretty. It's relatively comprehensive, really focused on what would it mean to be successful, right? Uh, we spent a lot of time on change, which we've not talked about here, but how do you get organizations to do change? Um, and, and how do you make people comfortable? Uh, and then we spend a fair amount of time on content access, because if you can't figure out, uh, if you can't figure out where the stuff is that matters, then you know that Copilot or something else is not going to get it. You can't use it for RAG. Um, and so how do you identify those high priority targets and then get them into your search so that they can get into Copilot so that you can get the answers you need? Rob, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have that's critical to this conversation? Well, there's a lot we haven't talked about. <laughs> but I think, 
you know, I think there's this kind of mystery about uh, this, these large language models and so forth. And, and they, they obey certain very uh, formulaic rules, but the, the magical rule, the rule that you need to think about as you're trying to roll out the Microsoft 365 copilot or any other, you know, even if you're in a different technology, how do I get my content to the large language model at the mm -hmm. time of query so that I can get better, more appropriate, more localized, specific results? Excellent. Rob, I really appreciate your time. I've learned a lot today. Thank you. Well, thank you. We've got to talk about how, how technology allows people who are not by themselves or who are not local to each other to become friends. You and I met through uh, events that we were doing. We get to see each other occasionally through events. Most of my friends are some way connected to technology and often they don't even live near me.